on this solemn feast of Christ the King, we close with the church throughout the world, led by Pope Francis earlier this morning, we close the year of faith. An inspiration that the Lord gave to Pope Benedict, upon which he acted just about a year ago. It has been a beautiful year of faith. It has been a time for seeing the beauty of faith, the beauty of our charity, and the beauty of our liturgy, which will be the main I don't want to say weapons, which will be the main instruments that the Lord gives us for the new evangelization, which has been the underlying theme of the year. Evangelization through beauty. The year of faith went fast. We had many activities. So we decided that maybe at the end we should do something relatively low-key. And that is focus on what is basic to our faith, focus on the symbol of faith, as it's called, focused on the Nicene Creed in the homily at all Masses today. Now, the Nicene Creed falls right in the middle of the liturgy, as it were. The Creed is a response of faith to the word that we have heard, but it is also the perfect introduction to the mysticism of the liturgy into which we are about to enter after the creed. After the creed, we begin our movement toward the invitation of the priest to lift up our hearts. And that means we are mystically lifted up to heaven to participate in the one eternal worship led by the one eternal high priest Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. The creed is our yes to the faith that we have heard in the scriptures, proclaimed so beautifully. The creed is also the transition of entrance into what is mystical. And how does that work? that mystical part. We've been through a tough time with the creed. In the last 50 years, the creed was often looked upon as too long. People can't understand it. Let's substitute for it another shorter creed, or let's renew our baptismal promises Let's find an end run around the creed because it's too long and nobody understands it. That is unfortunately overly superficial. The whole point of the creed is to spell out in words the mysteries of our faith. The creed is not meant to be understood. The creed is an instrument of mysticism that the Lord gives to us. How? Everything we say in the creed is true. 
and we do not understand what we say in the creed, and yet God gives us the mystical gift to proclaim as true that which we do not understand. The angels and saints in heaven understand the mysteries expressed in the creed. We, here in the church, militant, do not. We don't understand. We're not meant to understand. What a mystical gift it is to be able to proclaim what is true even though we don't understand it. And when we proclaim what is true, we are stating what the angels and saints in heaven understand, and that we don't understand yet. When we proclaim the words of that creed, we are speaking the language of heaven here on earth. We're anticipating the fullness of the kingdom where Christ alone is the center of all, where Christ is everything for everyone. The creed appreciated is a mystical moment, and it's best when we sing it. So I hope following the year of faith, many will participate in singing the creed more frequently. Because since the words are mystical, since the words properly belong to the angels and saints and not to us, they're better sung so that they're slowed down and appreciated. The Eastern Church liturgies have a beautiful way of teaching us the mysticism of the creed. In the Eastern liturgies, when the creed is sung, the priest takes a chalice veil. You know what a chalice veil is over there. But theirs is much larger. And the priest takes that chalice veil and he lifts it up and he waves it gently in front of his face as a sign that the Holy Spirit, the breath of the Holy Spirit, is coming down upon us and enabling us to proclaim as true these mysteries which we do not understand, the mysteries that are on the other side of the veil, the mysteries that are veiled from the community's eyes as the priest holds that veil before his eyes. It's a beautiful symbol. I'm tempted to do it sometimes, but we're not supposed to do that, so I don't do it. It's a beautiful symbol. And equally beautiful is the ritual celebrated when a priest of the Eastern Rite goes home to the Lord when he dies. The bishop, standing at the open casket of the priest, while the creed is being sung, again holds the chalice veil before his face as a sign that what is on the other side of the veil is hidden from him. But then he takes that veil after the creed is finished and places it with the other side of the veil down on the priest's face. A beautiful sign that now the priest is called to see what is on the other side of the veil. The priest proclaimed that is true all his life. But now he can understand the way heavenly people speak. 
The creed is heavenly speak. It's the anticipation of the kingdom where Christ is the king. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are given the mystical gift to proclaim true what we cannot understand. That really is mystical. And so we should never be looking for ways to take an end run around the creed because it's too long and especially because we don't understand it. Some people in recent times have had the idea that the language that we speak at the liturgy should be more like the language that we speak when we're having a nice pizza over at Lombardino's or somewhere. And since we never say things when we're eating a pizza, we would never say the sausage and the cheese are consubstantial. Since we would never say that there, we should never say it in church. Because we never say that when we're having a pizza, that's the reason why we should have it in church, because the Mass is not a pizza party. Right? So, let's appreciate the creed for the beauty of its mysticism. The beauty of its mysticism. And let us pray from our heart during the rest of this Mass and every day, Lord, be mindful of me when you come into your kingdom. The kingdom which is anticipated right now as we profess our faith and continue on into the mysticism of the union of heaven and earth. Let us open our hearts wide to the gift of that mysticism, and God forbid that we would ever take that for granted. Praise be Jesus Christ. Amen.